Aomitakuyapi. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Wana Botapi. Time to eat. Today I'm going to make a dish that's not really a res dish but it's a dish I really like to, to make and prepare and eat. Uh, this dish doesn't really have a name. Um, I just say my, my lemon, garlic, rosemary, chicken, because <laughs> those are the ingredients. And here we have what we need for this dish. And we have chicken. I'm using chicken. I don't know what you would call those in English, but in German, they say schenkels. You can see the drumstick and uh, the thigh all connected together. Uh, I think in America they say this is the leg. So this is what I'm going to use. And then you see the other things I'm going to use with it. There's some lemons, uh, whole garlic, looks like this. And we're going to use all of that. And um, rosemary, we're going to use all of this too. And uh, this is that stuff is going to go on the chicken. And... Then as the chicken is finishing, we're going to make rice with this dish. Goes really good together. So, in preparing for this, um, what, what, one place to start would be with the garlic. As I said, it looks like this. And you take it apart. There's outer, there's, for those of you that don't know, um, there's a outer layer here. What I usually do is take a knife and go like this and then you, you can peel it off. And then when you get done, you have all, the, all these peelings left. Now that's, that's part of it. Okay. But then it's, uh, there's a bunch of little pieces like that and they look like this. They're all clumped together. This is a, one of the garlic pieces. I think there's an English term, a clove. They call this a garlic clove. So then when you get this, you have to peel off this layer. See, there's still a, a wrapping around it like that. You want to take this brown stuff off. And when you do that, then you take this stuff and then put it all together because that's going to go in the garbage. And then after you take that peeling off, you have something that looks like this. This is what you're going to use. And then what we're going to do here is here's the... The one of my utensils that I'm going to use in preparing. Maybe let me go through that. Oh, I'll show you really quick first. This is called a garlic press. And I never knew these existed until I went to Ikea. And I saw one of these and I said, what is this? And an Ikea worker said, this is how you use it. You put a garlic clove in there. And you, you bring this thing on top like that. And then you press it. Like this, voila, there you have your garlic pieces. And usually with the knife, I, I get the rest of it that doesn't come out. And that's how you use that. And there, there'll be some stuff on the inside too. And I, I use that too, by the way. Some people throw that out, but I use it because it smells good. I love the smell of garlic. Mmm, mmm. There should be a cologne called garlic, garlic something, garlic pleasures of delight. That should, that's what it should be called. So that's how I use that for the garlic. Um, and concerning the lemons, what I do is I'm going to take, I'm going to zest the lemons, they call it. And um, what I do is I take this thing and it's kind of a scraper. Uh, people use uh, some people use it to scrape cheese and things like that. But you get your lemon, you wash it first, make sure it's clean. Wash it with water, cold water, and wipe it, wipe it dry with a paper towel. And when it's ready, you go like this to get all the. You go all the way around. I'll, I'll show you how I do that. For example, like this. Watch this. Oh, starting to smell good. Garlic and lemon. 
Mmm, mmm, mmm. That should be a cologne too. Garlic and lemon. So I'm gonna do this, and you see it's kind of white. I'm taking some of the yellow stuff off. That's called zesting. So you take, you do this, and it all falls into the bowl. I'm gonna do this to both lemons. Okay. I'm gonna do. I get get it so that I go all the way around. So then it's it's all white. Then when I'm done with that, I put this aside. Get it a little bit soft, squeeze it, because I'm going to use the juice too. So I get it so it's soft, then take my favorite knife and you cut it in half. And then sometimes lemons, I get bio lemons and they have a lot of seeds. So I use this, it's a strainer, put that there very carefully, then I squeeze the lemon. And you'll see, I'm going to show you a little bit later how it looks, okay? Just describing it for you now. So then I squeeze the lemon, the half lemon, I cut it in half and get a half and I squeeze it and the seeds fall in here. That, that way the seeds don't go in there. But the juice comes through and it goes in there. So that's what I'm going to do with those things. So I'm, all these garlic pieces, I'm going to do the uh, with the garlic press. I'm going to put all of that in there. And this is going to be filled up with the juice of both lemons and the, the zest, that stuff on the outside. Squeeze all of that in there. And then um, we have our olive oil. And we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in there, a little bit of salt. And then I'm going to mix it together with a spoon. And that's going to go on top of the chicken. Now, as for the chicken, uh, I just finished uh, washing them. Whenever you're working with chicken, it's always a good idea to, to wash it, yeah? I mean, not with soap. <laughs> when I first uh, was learning how to do this dish, that uh, somebody said, yeah, you wash your chicken. So I thought, put dishwash soap. And <laughs> so it's not a good idea. <laughs> Believe me, from experience, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> flashback okay um, so cold water run it under cold water and then make you know clean it off so there's it's it's nice and clean then you get paper towels and and then you wipe it wipe it dry and let it sit there for a couple of minutes to dry and that's what I've done so these are ready to be processed so what I do there next is I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil over this. I'm going to show you how. Just a little bit, not too much, because we're going to use a lot in here too. In the when I make this marinade, I guess is what you call, go well, like that, just over the top. Because then what I do with my hands is now I'm going to like give it a massage. <laughs> Massaging chicken legs. <laughs> Get it, move the oil so that it goes all around the chicken, the legs. Oh, by the way, I put this baking, uh, baking paper underneath. I, I put two sheets of paper on here. Uh, that, the only reason why I did that is because before on the baking tray, I would put the chicken on top of that. And then when the chicken is done, it's stuck to the to the bar, and it's really hard to clean too. So I use baking paper to so that the chicken doesn't stick to the, the thing. That's optional. You don't have to do that, but I do that because I'm lazy. I don't want to scrub this tray. <laughs> so to make it easy. So we do this and get it all ready. I think we have it all pretty much. Massage it up, everything is oiled up. And then I want to take a little pause here because I have to wash my hands now and I'm going to put some salt and pepper on, but I'll be right back. So I wash my hands. Um, like I said, whenever you're working with fowl or birds, it's 
always a good idea that every time you finish handling it, if you got to do something else, you got to touch something else, wash your hands, especially with chicken and especially with turkey because you don't want to mess around with those germs when, when it's not a good temperature to make you really sick. I know that from experience. So next thing I'm going to do is put some pepper and salt over this chickens, chicken legs and okay and can be a little bit generous here okay and when this is all cooking together you may not actually taste the pepper but when it mixes with everything oh it does something it does something really magical to the to the taste the overall taste of everything the flavor Mostly I do that to the top. You can do this to the other side too if you want to, but this is the part that's going to be doing most of the cooking. It's, so it's up to you. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, it all tastes really good. So And also I use sea salt. It's the healthiest kind of salt out there. It's not iodized. It's good for you. And this is really going to cook it does something to, mm, I don't know, brings everything together, I think. So now we have that sitting there. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a while. Now I'm gonna work on this part. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is get the, all these garlics pressed. And this is a lot of garlic. It's up to you. How much garlic do you want to use? Maybe some of you don't, um, Want to use so much but i love garlic and garlic is healthy i don't know what it does but all i know is it's, it's healthy and it's, it smells really good whoops excuse me okay i just go one after the other and uh, at the end i clear off whatever is excess really a good press the press Okay, almost got, got it done, you see that? Oh, this is smelling really, really, really good. Maybe some of you out there are going, jeez, that's a lot of garlic. <laughs> yeah, it is, but it tastes good. And it's gonna go over all of the, the chicken in the end so that's why we need a lot of it okay we got all that and then get the rest the residue out see how much you can get get as much as you can then the rest you can rinse out okay i think i got that I think I got it all. Just have to scrape it out. You can make this for any time, but uh, since I've been living in Germany, um, I make it for like uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I, I don't know how to make turkey. <laughs> so this is, I usually eat this when I when I'm making, uh, for when I celebrate Thanksgiving. I know some people are like, that's a, that's a, a bad holiday. Should be called Thanksgiving. And um, if you've heard something like that, I highly recommend that you watch my video that I call Thanksgiving. I, I posted it about a month ago. It's just called Thanksgiving. And you'll hear the true story behind Thanksgiving. This is a really Indian holiday. Okay, I got that ready. Now I'm going to work on zesting the lemons. And let's see how, how fast I can get this done. <laughs> it's like a few minutes. This is a good workout. 
we are really taking some <laughs> it's really a, a workout here maybe for some of you if you're really upset about something do this gets all the energy out so your brunt, your mind can come in and help you solve whatever problem that you're having work out the energy let that energy come out so your mind can come in and say okay how can we make the best of our situation in life and then you come up with all kinds of ideas but doing something physical is a good thing it's good for your heart too okay i think that's oh came really close there but that's okay i think this is good enough for the first one i'm look, taking a look at it you don't want to overdo it because the next thing you know <laughs> you'll be cutting into the lemon and you don't want to do that. Ah, oh, getting a lot of zest. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Take a look at that. Lots of zest there. That's really nice. That's exactly what you want to see. And with six chicken legs, two lemons usually does the trick. Because you need enough to, to cover all of those, those chickens. Chicken eggs. Okay. You know, long time ago, see, on the reservation, yeah, there's, there's good things and there's bad things. Just like everywhere else in this world. Um, when I was a young boy, my mother was a preschool teacher. And it's children from the whole community that goes there. So there's Indian kids, there's white kids. And one time there was this old man and he volunteered, well, he drove his, his grandchildren to, um, to school. They were uh, four or five years old, a boy and a girl. And he noticed in the winter time, there were all these Indian kids coming in and they were so cold and so he talked to my mother and he asked her if it would be okay if he could take these pick these kids up and bring them to school because they were so cold and my mom said if you want to but he volunteered his his time to school didn't have a bus that time okay next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the lemon in half you have to be careful. Look at that, all that juice is coming out. Be careful. Okay, got a cutting board here. Okay. Okay, let's see. I think that seeds. I don't know what that is. Okay, so now I use this. I have to be really careful because sometimes this thing likes to fall in. And now I'm going to squeeze. Well, I could pick it up like this. Just as long as you have this over there, because you don't want the seeds to get into the, the bowl. Okay, so you see how that, all that lemon juice is coming out. Try to get as much lemon juice out of there as you can. Look at, there's some seeds, see? You don't want that in there because if, if you accidentally leave some seeds in there, you're going to hear some popping in the oven. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay, got that one. And do this one too. Same thing. Yeah, so anyway, this uh, old man, he was, uh, he made himself the bus driver for the preschool that my mother worked at. And uh, so he was picking up the Indian kids and the white kids and bringing them together. And all the kids, they grew to love him, yeah, because he was really friendly and nice. And as a result of this activity, he, he and my mother became really good friends. And uh, he was a farmer. 
and um, during the summer times, well, I guess throughout the year, um, he would trade with my mom. See, on the reservation, you might have heard me talk about this on some videos that long time ago, uh, when the reservations were first built, um, you know, the, uh, our, our ancestors, they couldn't leave the reservation during that time. They couldn't gather, you know, the wild vegetables and wild fruits. They couldn't hunt. And they only were allowed to eat what the government gave to them, which was really unhealthy foods. And that evolved into something called um, commodities or commodities. And it's canned foods, canned meat, canned fruits, canned vegetables, powdered stuff. You got flour, uh, corn, corn, I forgot what it was called, cornmeal, oatmeal, um, canned juices, things like that. They're really unhealthy foods. But that's all people had in those days. This was... Um, before food stamps. So um, that's what everybody had. And this farmer, he traded with my mother and he wanted to have some of those food, those commodities, to feed to his animals. <laughs> and in exchange, he gave my mother chicken. And so we always had chicken to eat uh, at home. And this is chicken that's right from the farm. And he always brought a lot of eggs, my goodness. Oh, geez. We, <laughs> our refrigerator really had a lot of eggs in it. And, and he always kept us well supplied. And my mother traded with him. She had a job and uh, we had a lot of commodity foods that we didn't eat. And she didn't... Uh, she, she had no problem giving it up. Um, so this is um, why I like chicken. <laughs> okay, now I got all this done. And I'm going to put some olive oil in there. And uh, maybe, maybe about that much. And then I'm going to mix it together. I need a spoon. So let me gather a small spoon. And mix it all up. Get everything in there. Oh, we need some. I know I just salt it in there, but the the mix the marinade asks for salt too. Yeah, that should be good. That's just a little bit. Then we mix all of this together. And what we should do at this point is get our oven heated up. And we want to do that to 200 degrees Celsius. For those of you on the res, that's 376 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's see, get this. Okay, I don't know what that's called, but I know it's five clicks. <laughs> it's, it's a, you can hear the oven going there. So that's going to be preheating. Now I'm getting this ready here. So I'm make sure this is all mixed up. Okay. Oh, that looks really good. Oh, the smell. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Then I'm going to let this sit here just for a little bit. Now I'm going to get the rosemary ready. And I got my special tool for that and release the safety thing. Uh, be careful, these are really, really, really sharp. Okay, I'm gonna use all of this. So, okay, as low as I can. And it would be a good idea to rinse this under water too, cold water, and have that ready. Okay, so I'm gonna get this rinsed. Go to the, okay, I'm going to do this. Cold water. Okay. Oh, that's rosemary. 
very, it's just, oh my gosh, that really smells good. I need to get a couple of paper towels and get this ready. Just kind of dab it like this. Pat it a little bit. If you want to, you can do this in the very beginning and then let it sit there and dry. But I wanted to show you what I what I use. And some some stores they have it um, pre-cut and in packages, but I like it like this because you see, whoops, I'll pick that up later. You see this? You can water that, and more will grow. So you can just have you can have a lot of Rosemary ready. Okay, this is ready. I'll leave this set right here. And let's get this on to the chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to put this on the chicken. You see the, try to get spread the garlic around. I go one spoonful on every chicken, then I come around and, and keep doing that until I used everything up. And we have one chicken that's facing the wrong way. <laughs> that one's out of order. <laughs> he's, he's rebelling. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this guy from the uh, that's a good friends with my mother. He was a sweet old man, and and um, yeah, he's, him and my mother were like best friends, and uh, they remained that way through all their lives. They were friends up to yeah the very end, and they were like brother and sister. And I think that's really cool when you see something like that different race because in South Dakota some of you may know it's a very very racist state and oh, it's unfortunate that it's that way it's so unfortunate that people only look at the outer person they don't take the time to to um, you know get to know somebody and uh, that's the one thing I learned from my mother is that um, when she was a teacher, she always had the kids um, playing together, the Indian kids and the white kids. She wanted them to, to remember that. She planted a seed into these children. And she, after 30 years of teaching, she retired and then so there's like three generations that know her as teacher <laughs> okay i'm going to put these on top before we put them in the oven and this is really good now these should be in the oven a total of one hour but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the timer set for a half hour so in a half hour I'm gonna check it out. And uh, there'll be some uh, sauce on the bottom. So I'm going to use my baster. This is good, good to have. Pick it up and pour, pour it back on the chicken. I'll check on the chicken in 30 minutes to do that. I have it set, I need to put it. Um, so I'm gonna put this in the oven now. And oh, should get, I need to get my my gloves. There we go. I really like this oven because it has these trays. I think it's this one. Yeah, the bottom one. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to put the chicken in. Make sure it clicks. Okay, this guy is going in for 30 minutes. Okay, so it'll be in there for 30 minutes. Then I, 
I check it and then I baste it. I get some of the juices off, put it on top of the chicken. And then I put it back in the oven. And then I set the timer for 15 minutes. And then when that 15 minute bell alarm rings, that's when I'm going to put the rice, I'm going to make the rice. So I'm going to put some hot water in there and a cup of rice and start that because that's going to take about 30 minutes to make. Then I set the alarm again for another 15 minutes. And then when that 15 minutes is over, I check the chicken again. And if it looks done, if I like the color, then I take it out and it has to sit for another 15 minutes. You should always, when you're baking chicken, when you put it out, let it sit for 15 minutes because not, not only for it to cool down, but it's kind of like uh, still cooking internally. Then after that 15 minutes, it tastes really good. And when that's done, the rice is done at the same time and it's time to eat. So that's how we do this chicken. I'm going to come back in a, shortly to check up on that. So. I'll catch you in a few minutes. And this song is called While You're Waiting for Your Chicken to Cook in the Oven.
Oh, the chicken. Oh no. Okay, I'm going to uh, test out my chicken and uh, see what it looks like so far. 30 minutes has gone by and it's looking really good. This is what it should look like at 30 minutes. The end result will be a little bit darker, but right now it's perfect. It's really good. Let me get this out a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm going to baste it. It's just putting some of the sauce back on. More of that nice lemon flavor. Look at all that lemon juice that's on the bottom. This is all lemon juice. You can put this on your rice too if you want to. It's really good stuff. And it seems to all be going down in this area. Just move this aside a little bit. Move your rosemary around a little bit so you can get some of this stuff on there. It'll taste really good. Okay. Now I'm going to put some of this stuff back on. And I want to get over here because I don't think I've got this one. Over here. Looks like I'm not really doing anything, but believe me, there's stuff going on to the chicken. Okay. Right. Looks real good. Okay, I'm going to put this back up. Got rosemary back in there. The, oh, this is the rose. Even the rosemary smells. Oh, it's just. Oh, it's a really nice smell. Okay, so we're going to put this back in. It's pretty good for 30 minutes. Looks really nice. Okay, now I'm going to set my alarm to 15 minutes. And when this alarm goes off, when you use these alarms, make sure you go all the way and then bring it back. Let's see, do I have it? Yeah, all the way. And then bring it back to where you want it. And I want it at 15 right there. So at 15 is when I start the rice. So, we'll see you in 15 minutes. Okay, now we're gonna start our rice. Uh, the chicken has been in the oven for another 15 minutes. And the buzzer just rang. So I got some water boiling here and we're gonna put about a cup of rice. It, this, uh, this is for two people and it's, it's enough. Yeah, but uh, it's up to you how you wanna do it. Okay, so now I'm going to put the rice in. And that's going to cook for about a half hour. Now, when you make your dish, um, also not so high. I'm going to put this on a low level. Okay, for level one for me. Let's see if yeah, that's at the one. Okay. So when you make this dish, um, I make it with rice most of the time, but make it, make whatever you like to eat with chicken. Maybe you like to eat pasta, or maybe you like to eat potatoes um, as your side dish, whatever you want. Uh, but this is what I'm doing tonight for two people. So this will go for um, 30 minutes, but I have my, um, alarm is going to go for another 15 minutes for the chicken. The chicken will be done in 15 minutes so I will see you again in 15 minutes. Okay the final buzzer has rung for the chicken. The chicken has spent a total of one hour in the oven. Usually it takes an hour to cook chicken legs. So now I'm going to take the chicken out and mmm, mmm, lila wa stamina. The chicken smells, it smells really good. Mmm, well now lila the watching. No, I am really hungry. So I'm gonna take it out and set it out for a little bit. <laughs> Where is the English? For a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes I just I still speak res English every now and then. Okay, here we go. Oh, be very careful when they take this out. It's hot stuff coming through here. I'll let that set for a while. Okay, so now I'm going to close the oven up. 
and turn it off. You want to make sure your oven is turned off. You don't need any unpleasant surprises coming up here. Okay, chicken it looks really good and mmm, 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 I'm really, really hungry. Okay, now we're gonna, the chicken has to sit for another 15 minutes and uh, we're gonna cover it up with a little oil and it's gonna do like a silent cooking, you could say. Um, little bit by itself here but uh, I got, got the rice still going here that goes another 15 minutes but that cooks for 15 minutes this rests for 15 minutes the 15 minutes will be time to eat okay let me get this over here it doesn't have to be tight you don't have to really make it tight and strong just as long as your chicken is covered So now that's going to sit for 15 minutes, it'll, then the rice should be done, then it'll be time to eat. Again, the chicken takes a total of one hour in the oven. Um, just to do a little recap, um, I put it in the oven and I let it go for a half hour, then I checked it and I did some basting with this, put the juices back onto the chicken and put it back in for 15 minutes and uh, then I put the rice on the stove then we set it for another 15 minutes and then it's done so one whole hour it's been in the oven so now we just wait for another 15 minutes Ready? if you would like to make a salad with with your dish this is what I do and these are some of the things that I use to make a salad uh, carrot uh, paprika pepper a red pepper and um, lettuce and some tomatoes and and uh, usually with this um, you saw it in the other video if you haven't seen my other video which is uh, I'll put a link to it in the description it's another cooking video you see how I prepare this and that and um, you can make your salad if you would like to eat your dish with the salad which is a healthy thing to do um, you can make your salad the way you like to make it. This is what I use. Okay, now the rice is done and it's time to eat. And so we're getting ready. Let's lift up the chicken. Oh, that looks really good. In case you might be wondering what this dark stuff is, that's the garlic. Okay, it looks like that, but it really adds to the flavor of the chicken. And the rosemary, you can eat the rosemary with the chicken because this is really good stuff. Crunchy. So now we're getting ready for that. So let's proceed and see you in a few minutes. See you in a minute. Okay, here's the meal in its finished form. Smells really good. Looks very delicious. So now we get ready to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful meal. And what now will that be? On my meal tonight, I decided to eat a little bit of tzatziki with my rice and mix it in with some chicken. Yeah, that's one heck of a good flavor there. For those of you that don't know, tzatziki is a Greek dish. And it's made out of cucumbers and cream fresh and quark, garlic. And a lot of garlic on this meal. It's a really good one. I love it. And you can add your favorite kind of thing with your rice too. Maybe you like yogurt with it or whatever you like. And by the way, I don't drink alcohol, so what's in the glasses on the table is water. What are your favorite dishes? If you would like to, please post it in the comment section. Or maybe you have some recipes to share too. 
Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video. I really, really appreciate it. And if you would like to send a special thanks in support of this channel, look at the bottom of this video where the title is, and right under that, where it says like, dislike, and share, right in that area, slide it towards the left. And you will see the symbols change. And then you will see a heart-shaped button that says thanks on it. If you would like to click on there to send your thanks of support, I would really appreciate it. As I really do enjoy making these videos and speaking with you and spending some time with you. So again, thank you very much for listening. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book costs 119 American dollars. This price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online and I give spiritual consultations as well. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H-E-H-A-K-A, -A, the number 7, at yahoo.com. When you send your payment, please include your shipping address and your email address. Oh, Lila Pilamaelo. Thank you very much. In the Lakota way, everything is circular. As a result, we do not have a word for goodbye in the Lakota language. And so instead we say until next time, which in Lakota is Doksha Ake. And I will catch you in the next video.